Hey guys, welcome back. We are working on a Subaru today and we're just doing some testing. Um, I have the Launch Smart Link J Box. Normally I use this with the Launch Torque Link, but it does work as a J Box, so we are going to test it out on a Subaru. Now, this is a 2010 Subaru. Impreza or Legacy, but it's a it's a sedan. It's not the wagon. Um, I don't know if there's an update available for it, but I just want to test out the box. So we are going to use the Subaru Flashlight software, see if there's an update for this. Um, we'll check service bulletins, see what the update's for, if there is one. And if there's not one, we'll see if we can write the same calibration in just for testing purposes. Um, I was hoping I had a newer Subaru on the lot because I do have the Subaru S SM4. Uh, factory scan tool software, but it only works on 15 and newer. Um, anything older than that is the SSM3, and that requires the factory interface. It does not work with the JPOX. So you have to have either the Subaru Diagnostic Interface or the Denso DSTi. Um, I don't have either one of those, so we are going to continue on with just trying to flash this vehicle. If you guys have one of these and you're unable to flash for some reason, it may need a firmware update. I know mine did in order to uh, to work with all the vehicles I've tested it with so far. And the way I updated it was with the ethernet cable and using the on-screen display. Um, I couldn't get it to update through my computer, but there's several different firmwares in here, depending on what you're doing. Um, so I may have just been trying to update the wrong firmware. When you have it connected to the scan tool, the launch tablet, that updates the VCI firmware for the launch tablet. The JBox firmware updates differently. So just in case you guys are having issues, um, maybe I'll do another video on how to update the firmware in this using the ethernet cord. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in and I'll fire up my laptop. And first we'll take a look at the calibration ID using another piece of software. Okay, so we're gonna use a piece of software called Shop Foreman Pro. It's from Bosch. And it's the software that used to work with the old Bosch MasterTech VCI. But it works with JBoxes for generic stuff. Now, it's not great. It's pretty limited. And it crashes often, and you get script errors from the website that's, load, that's loading. Um, but we can get some information from it without having to disconnect our JBox and laptop and connecting a different scan tool. Um, so just by changing the software we're using, we can look up information like a calibration ID. Now, if you're working on a newer vehicle that you can use the factory OEM software, then by all means do that. You can look up the calibration ID that way. Uh, but a lot of vehicles, you can just do it through here. So if you have never used this and you haven't used it with your specific JBox, we're gonna go up to setup and we're gonna to go to J2534 Global. You're gonna scroll down and pick your JBox. Now you probably won't have this many options. I just have a lot of different drivers installed on my laptop and several different JBoxes. So each piece of software I install, more drivers get installed. So I picked the Launch Tech, Launch J2534. We'll hit OK. And then up here at the top, we're gonna to hit OBD2, New Scan. It's, I have the key on and I have a maintainer connected to the vehicle. It's going to try a diff couple different protocols until it finds a way it can communicate with the vehicle. We identified ECM number one and number two and it says this is a TCM. So let's go to Vehicle Info. I don't wanna save this. Um, I just want to look. These are our calibration ID numbers. Now this top one's for the ECM, the bottom's for the TCM. Sometimes on the Subarus you will have two calibration ID numbers under ECM number one. I'm not sure why. Uh, Toyota does it where you have ECM number one, but it has the, the engine control and the transmission control calibrations. I did a 07 Subaru the other day and it had two calibrations under ECM number one and another calibration under ECM number two. This one only has the one. So EZ1GB10H. Now with this software, you can't copy and paste. So that's kind of a annoying feature, but maybe if we start a new file, we can look at this information. Um, let me see if it saves anywhere. You know, I don't use this software for a lot of stuff other than just looking at the calibration numbers. 
I suppose we can type it in here. EZ1GB10H and it's easy enough to at this point copy it for later use. So now we're going to open up the Flashrite software and we can enter that calibration ID right here in this box. There we go. No reflash files available. Now I don't know, oh it is case sensitive so that's probably our problem here. Let's do cap lock. Let's try this again with cap lock on. I don't know what year this software was developed but most stuff is not case sensitive anymore. Still says no reflash files available. Okay, so we are going to spec out this vehicle. This, we're gonna to go to the ECM, 2010. It is an Impreza, has a 2.5 non-turbo engine. And we're gonna search. So we only have two calibrations, federal and California. This is a automatic. So here we show the new calibration is EZ1GB10H. That matches our current calibration. So that's why it didn't find a newer calibration available for this vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and see if it'll let us program this vehicle. So I'm gonna close Shop Foreman, just so we can um, use the JBox as priority for Flashrite. It may not let us do anything, but we're gonna give it a shot. Normally, normally when we do this, we're going to have to find the D-check connector or the inspection mode connector. On the older ones, it's a green test connector. Sometimes it's underneath the driver's side of the steering column. Sometimes it's below the glove box. So make sure that our screen saver is disabled. Make sure that all other programs have been terminated. Make sure that the vehicle is on a maintainer. Make sure your laptop's plugged in. Don't disturb your cables, turn off all accessories, connect the green D-check connector. So if we need to find out where that D-check connector is, we can look it up in any service information provider you have. Now let's go to ProDemand, and I'm just going to search for D-check and see if it finds it for me. I may need a hyphen in there. Here we go. D-check connector location. Under the steering column, above the ECM near the evaporator, behind the right kick panel, behind the left kick panel. These locations may vary. Okay. Um, so this is part of a service bulletin just letting us know where the D-check connector is. Let's go back to our search and see what else we can find. So it's really not going to give us more information than that. Uh, let's just go look. I think this one's probably going to be behind the glove box because I didn't see it underneath the dash when I plugged in the scan tool. So this one was tucked down behind the carpet, the very furry, fuzzy carpet. Uh, we're just going to connect those together. Now that they're connected together, if we cycle the key, the cooling fans will start cycling and a bunch of other stuff will start clicking on and off. Now you don't have to cycle the key as far as I know. I've been successful without cycling the key after connecting that. And I prefer to do that so I'm not putting extra load with the cooling fan cycling on and off um, before the programming event. So that is connected. Let's go ahead and hit next. We're going to use a generic scan tool. Actually, we're hitting a pass through here. And then the launch. Yep. Next. Ignition switch is on. Next. Yep. Device is prepared. So. The launch device just beeped. Decryption keyword is required. Okay, this throws a lot of people off. They're like, what is the decryption keyword? Well, Subaru gives it to us. It's right down here on the screen. Uh, 6A Edward Charlie 44 Alpha Delta. Our cap lock is still on. 6A Edward Charlie 44 Alpha Delta. Why? you need a decryption keyword when they give it to you anyways why doesn't it do it automatically I have no idea but it's all right we're gonna hit next latest logic has already been installed okay so it won't let us program it um, but that tells me that it was able to identify the vehicle it was able to read everything 
and if this vehicle needed an update it would have allowed us to update this vehicle well if if this vehicle would have been uh, something we could have updated it would go through the updating process right then and there the once you install flash right on your computer which you have to order the disc online once you install it on your computer you can just hit the next button it'll program it'll start overriding it'll give you a progress bar it typically takes about 10 minutes um, I don't know if I've had any that have taken longer than that but the Subarus at least the ECM normally programs fairly quickly I will throw up on the screen the uh, the progress bar of what one looks like when you start programming it so in most cases after I finish programming a Subaru or something where I don't have the OEM scan tool built into the laptop uh, I will open up the shop form and pro again just go to OBD2 do a quick vehicle info and make sure that that calibration has updated to the latest calibration that my service bulletin mentions or whatever it may be um, this one we won't be able to go any further but at least we know that the device is communicating with the laptop the device is communicating with the car and everything there should work perfectly now we can use a shop form and pro as a scan tool as well which I don't think I've scanned this vehicle I did when it came in I don't know if I cleared codes it had a plug wire that was off so we will uh, we'll find out real quick go to OBD2 new scan diagnostic trouble code snapshot which will get the same information if we hit vehicle health let's try that now we actually may get a bunch of codes which you will sometimes get if you leave that D-check connector connected so I will have to remember to unplug that before we're done um, so let me cancel that up here at the top it says no confirmed or pending codes same for the TCM so this is all of the drive info over here we can disable and reopen and enable some of this stuff if we don't want to see all of the drive info um, down here is going to be our monitors and it's going to show us what has passed and what hasn't so ready 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 not complete I probably did clear codes after I fixed the misfire um, and we haven't really driven the car that far since so it has not completed all this stuff the only one it has completed or that's ready is this comprehensive component and if we go down here there's mode 6 information and all of this stuff is going to be pass or fail as well if it's if it fails it'll light up red so this is kind of handy like on the Fords when you're looking for misfire information and then let's go back to the main page you can look at data as well so run snap list standard we'll just hit all global OBD2 parameters and I'll take a second to upload here this is a canned vehicle so it shouldn't be too slow but sometimes Subarus are slow anyways um, so we have all of the uh, global OBD2, OBD2 parameters now not all of this stuff will be used on every car uh, you could narrow the list down if you wanted to but you can get quite a bit of information from this screen if you don't want to connect another scan tool to look at some generic data maybe after an, a reflash or an update you can just open this up you don't have to change your interface but you can just jump right in here and look at something. So we're going to wrap this one up here. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Questions, comments, put those down below. Uh, whether it's the FlashWrite software, the ShopForm and Pro software, or the Launch JBox. Um, this is the Launch SmartLink C. It came with the Launch Torque Link tablet. Um, so you can use it with the tablet with the Launch software. It has some other features that I haven't tried or I'm not subscribed to, like you can do remote diagnostics with it and just plug the internet cord into it. Um, I'll do a video on updating the firmware on it. And then uh, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.